<laughs> okay, that was, that was kind of weird. Started up and I just kind of blanked out. Um, hey, today we're going to talk about some uh, shooting techniques that we can use. And for some reason here, I have my video playing in the background. So let me, let me get that stopped so we don't have to, I don't want to listen to myself while I'm trying to talk. So um, anyway, here, we're going to get the podcast started. Uh, like I said, this is going to be number 175. And on the, the last one, we talked about uh, uh, after we got all the uh, things set up, different ways you can practice to learn the back tension release, the surprise release and learn how to and know what a good release feels like shooting with your eyes closed and then finally getting to shooting with your eyes open. And all I was focusing on then was the feel of the bow going off to make sure it was going to work. So today we're going to cover a little bit more than that. Hi, my name is Roy Canterbury and I'm going to be hosting on Arch Talk 101. And just to let you know, there's multiple ways you can watch and listen to this uh, in the Arch Talk 101 Facebook group. Uh, I go live in that group so you can watch it live and comment. It's available right away. Uh, if you want to wait for the video to come out elsewhere, it comes out on Tuesdays and Saturdays on my YouTube channel, Learn to Fix It Yourself. And then the Audible comes out on Mondays and Fridays on Spotify and other places, as well as you can go out to Audible and listen to it there. I have several people that will listen to it there. That's nice and easy. It just keeps playing. Uh, you know, new one comes out, they get it right away. Uh, and then uh, uh, you can also watch the videos. Uh, there's links to the YouTube channel on uh, archtalk101.com uh, website. So you can go out there. There's other things out there as well. So that's ways you can listen to it. And if you ever want to be on the podcast, talk about archery, hey, just let me know. Um, archers are welcome anywhere from, uh, I, I'm thinking about getting a bow to Olympic archers. You're all welcome on the show. Everybody has a viewpoint. And that's why I call it Arch Talk 101. Uh, that's the name of the podcast because we're here to help you learn to, how to shoot better. And, you know, the tagline is your guide to better archery skills because that's my goal is to teach you a little better. And that's why I started doing some of these lessons on these podcasts. So let's get right into the, the meat of the show today. And now we've gone, like I said, we've gone over and uh, we've got the feel of the form, how the shot should feel. So I was focusing there. We wasn't really focused as much on where the arrow goes. So we didn't really care. Uh, we just wanted to focus on the form. Now that we've practiced that form, I always go back to that if you have any problems. Now we practice that form. Now we want to learn how to get a little bit better. And on one of the previous ones, I talked about shooting at a horizontal line and vertical line. Uh, you know, that's a good way to, you know, kind of get you the confidence you can hit your spot. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go through and... We're going to put a target up. It could be a single spot or a five spot. I like shooting at the five spots because it gives places to put my five arrows instead of stacking them all in together. Uh, once you get good enough where you're stacking them, you know, generally hitting the X ring, uh, you're going to start wrecking arrows and, and they get expensive. They're expensive. When I started, they're, they're even more expensive now, I think, than it was before. So um, you don't want to wreck your arrows if you can avoid it. So well, I'm just going to talk about mostly a five spot. And just because that's kind of what I prefer. Or if you have a three spot, that's okay too. Um, but I'm going to talk about the five spot. So what you want to do is you want to come, once you draw back, we've got over technique down, you draw back and then just kind of close your eyes. Don't put your finger on the trigger yet. Keep it behind the trigger. I'm assuming right now you have a wrist strap fastened on correctly onto your wrist, not on your hand. And put your finger behind the trigger when you draw back. And if you want to see how your form is, Go ahead and close your eyes and relax. Open your eyes and see where that pen is. If that pen's not where you want it, you need to change something. Um, either your grip is off or your feet are off. Uh, we used to do that um, when I was shooting in high school and rifle team. We would take and breathe in, breathe out, because you breathe, you shoot when you're on the exhale. Um, and then, you know, as, as you get a little bit better, you can time it between your heartbeats. But that's a little bit more advanced but uh so we'd exhale open our eyes and look if we're not on target we'd shift our our feet maybe i had to move our our knees slightly or our foot slightly or our elbow or something slightly and then close your eyes breathe in breathe out open them up once you're on target next time you breathe in you breathe out and you squeeze the trigger 
So taking that concept into archery, we're going to go and draw back, draw back your eyes open. You can do that. And then, you know, make sure your bow's level, make sure it feels good. Close your eyes. And now just kind of relax. Let everything sit there. Open your eyes. If you're way off the target and you have to pull back, then you're naturally going, that's your natural position where your aim point is. So you might need to shift your foot back or you shift forward or in or out. You know, if you're shooting, if you're aiming up too high, well, you may need to move your feet a little closer together. Or if you're too low, uh, you know, if you're too low, you probably need to move them uh, back a little bit to raise it up, uh, you know, or you might be arching in or out. So if with your eyes closed, feel, you can see what your body's doing. Make sure your body is in, in a good form, standing upright, not kind of twisted or hunched over. Make sure you're up. And now once you do that a few times, you're going to learn that is the position you need to have your feet in. Now I teach a pretty closed stance because that allows that arm when it goes off to go straight to your target. So that's what you want to do is figure out what your stance is to be in a neutral position where you're not using any muscles to twisting or turning. Uh, so you want to shoot that way. Now, you remember, you've got five different spots, five different positions. So you might have to learn that, okay, for the top left one, here's this position. Uh, the top right one, maybe I need to shift that foot back just a half inch. And now that lines me up just perfectly on that target. You know, maybe for the bottom ones, you need to, you, you know, move your feet closer together, um, you know, or or whatever you, however, which way you want to do them. So take and get that. That gives you a neutral position because anytime you're using muscles to pull the bow into alignment, when you shoot, what happens? You're going to relax. So once you relax, now then that bow has a tendency to bow, go towards your neutral uh, position. So that's something you want to look at when you're going through and shooting, you know, you go through your practice and then you're going to eventually, if you do that enough, you're going to shoot at that target. And right now, don't worry too much exactly where the arrow goes, you know, because more we're worried about, can you group in the same spot? So shoot at the upper target, you know, you can shoot multiple targets, you know, multiple targets or shoot at the same one three or four times. Uh, and if you start getting a really tight group, then you might want to move to different target. Um, you know, maybe what you do for the left side, you're in one position, the right side, you take, move both feet forward just slightly. You know, that might be what you need to do. And then, you know, maybe you want to shoot the, the top left one and then the bottom left one, because now you're sliding your foot in and out. And then maybe you want to move over and do the right side. It's, it's something that you need to figure out what technique you want to use to make yourself the most advantageous way to um, hit the target you're aiming at. And, you know, we've gone through, we know you can hit the target because of the horizontal line that's, you know, three quarters of an inch thick. And, you know, you can hit that consistently anywhere on the line, the vertical line, horizontal line. So now, you know, we can, we can hit that X ring because we've just proved to ourselves that we can do it because we hit that same, thickness of line horizontally as we did vertically, which makes us put in that one little spot. So we can do it at this point, you know, minus any, you know, errors that we introduce as we're shooting through it. Uh, you know, that's the, that's the thing that you want to not think about your last shot. It's done. You can't fix it. Don't think about your next shot because it hasn't happened yet. Concentrate on the only, the only one arrow that counts is the one that's loaded in your bow now. Uh, just like when you're out hunting, your first arrow is when it counts. You can't think about your last arrow or your next arrow because you only get one arrow. No, once in a while you can get more than one, but generally you get one shot. That's it. Make it count. So you want to make sure you go through all that. Now, me, I don't really use uh, any warm up targets. You know, if I want to go do warm up target because I I like to uh, hunt, so I'm going to go through and um, my first arrow counts. I'm not going to shoot three or four arrows, five arrows, six, shoot around and, and, you know, just kind of get warmed up. The way I warm up is I'm just going to draw the bow back and let down a couple times, make sure all the muscles are working. Um, I may take my practice string that I have. Uh, that's, that's the string that I've talked about many times on the podcast where I have a string that's the, the link that goes around my thumb that I'm holding the bow with. That's my draw length. 
So now I can work on my form without even shooting the bow. And I can do that release until that arm goes straight forward and that string comes straight off my hand to the target. Otherwise, I'm pulling it somewhere. So you can practice that uh, to, to get the technique down without actually shooting. So get, get your bow in your hand and draw back, close your eyes, relax, and then open your eyes. Where is your target? That is the thing you want to work on right now that's the biggest thing to work on is how am i going to stand to hit that upper left hand target or the upper right hand target or the bottom left or right target or the center target what am i going to do to stand to take care of that what do i have to move my feet just to get that perfect alignment and, and generally when you're at a tournament you you've got time in between arrows you got plenty of time you can draw back close your eyes open up and if you're right on your target then start putting your, your finger on your trigger and go through your shot process. If it's not, okay, what do I need to do? So, you know, you might need to shift. Let back down, draw back. Once you're back on that target where you want, close your eyes, open them up, and then go put your finger on the trigger. Um, or if you're using handheld, take it off the side and move it to, onto the trigger because you don't want to close your eyes while you have your hand on the trigger because you could actually go off and you aren't going to see any any danger that might happen in front of you. So that's that's something you want to go through and take a look at how you can make that a little bit better, line up your technique. You know, that's that's the biggest part right now because once you get that under control where you know you're aiming at it, it's your comfortable position. Because you know, if you have to pull the bow back or pull it forward, or if you got you know, instead of being, you know, a straight when you're off to the side, so now you're turned, and, and now that hand is coming up over the side. What happens when you shoot, that hand goes off to the side. So, you know, there's a lot of people that can do it, but I'm I'm the belief that let's not, you know, put any, any errors in it that we can't, you know, get out very easily. And that's why I like to teach that closed uh, uh, stance. But that also means that if you don't have the proper grip, going through your hand. Your hand's not like you're grabbing a bat. It's turned off to the side. So it goes down through there. So some will take and curl their fingers and put them on the side of the bow so you can't grip it. The only problem with that is you're putting tension into your hand. And you put tension into your hand. Now then when the bow shoots, you relax that tension. And, and you want to have your hand completely relaxed. So I like to just let them just kind of dangle right there and, and don't really put any pressure on them. And when I shoot, you know, I have the older bows, so they jump forward. So they'll hit my fingers, but the sling is on there. It won't let it drop to the ground. Uh, you'll see a lot of the, um, a lot of archers, you know, especially the Olympic ones with those great big long recurves, the bars up front, they'll shoot. And then, then their wrist kind of bends down and the bow drops down. Uh, you don't need to have your wrist bending down, but that's, they're, they're just kind of forcing through. And that naturally is your hand. It, let's see, as your hand goes, it's naturally going to, tilt down as you push you got your hand on the bow you're naturally going to go forward that hand is actually naturally going to dip down so don't worry about that because by the time your hand dips down the bow has already released the arrow the arrow's past the bow it's off the string once it's off the string you can't change it how it's going to go you can affect it up to the point when it relieves the string and it does not leave the string until the string you know back where the neutral position is where you loaded your bow it doesn't leave the string there. It goes further forward until it pulls it off. So the other force goes a little bit forward and then it pulls off. Uh, sometime if we can and get a slow motion video, but we can kind of see. I don't I don't know if my camera will record that kind of detail on there, but I'll try it one of these days and record it so we can see what, what it does. But as it leaves, then the bow, the bow is already going forward. And then, you know, a lot of them now have the string dampeners on them. So it hits the string stop so they can't go past where the neutral position is because that's what hits the, the string. And that's going to force the arrow off the string. It, your knock is designed to stay on until it's forced off by the force of the bow going off and the weight of the arrow pulling it forward. So it snaps off. If it doesn't, it's easy for it to drop off. If it drops, then you can dry fire your bow real easy. If, you, if you're full draw and that knock isn't on there tight and it falls off and you don't realize it, you know, or it slips down, now you can 
you can have other problems in there too. But that's just something you need to know your equipment. Um, make sure it's it's there. You should hear that little snap when you put it on. If you don't hear that little snap, uh, it's probably a little too loose. You might want to change your knock. And you know, a lot of them now with the unibushings, you just pull out the old one, push the new one in. Uh, if you had the old uh, glue on ones like your wood arrows or some of your aluminum arrows, you know, then you're heating them up, pulling them off and gluing on new ones. Uh, but most of the shooting compounds are shooting ones with knocks that can be replaced uh, as well as tips are going to replace. You know, a lot of target archers will actually glue in their tips so they don't have to worry about them coming loose because it always seems like your tips, you got to check your tips once in a while. Sometimes they'll rattle, they get a little loose or the glue in ones that you're only, you're not going to change them to put broadheads on them. You're always going to use them for target. Those are your target arrows. So, you know, get some glue in ones and then you don't have to worry about them coming out. So now that we know we have a neutral position where we're at. So we've figured out each of the five positions on this target, or if it's a single spot, the one position or the, or the, the three spot ones or, or whatever your targets you're going to be shooting. We know the positions we need to be in for those three different targets. You know, if you got the three, you know, in a line, you know, you, you know, from there for the first, the top target, you're going to do that. And the bottom target, you might slide your foot in and then uh, the middle one and move down. So that might be your position. And you just have to learn that for the first shot, you go here. I know for the second shot, I go here. The third shot, I go here. Um, kind of like what, uh, when I figured out what string walking was, you know, you're just kind of counting wraps around your serving to how far down you want to go. Um, that's kind of the, the real fine tuning on on those, but we're not really doing that with the compounds because uh, we're not changing the anchor point or anything else. Uh, so that's one of the things that you want to do is figure out which target you're going to be shooting and what your technique is for shooting that target. Because once we've figured out where our body needs to be for that perfect shot, you're going to get multiple good shots out of it. Uh, you know, if you're thinking about something else, you're not going to get a good shot. Now, now that we've figured out where this position is, now let's work on getting a nice tight group. So what you want to do on that is you don't want to look at your pins. Because if you're looking at your pins, you're going to hit wherever the pin is pointing. So you hit exactly where you wanted to because you're looking at the pin. You want to focus on only the spot. Now, if you're if you have a little X ring in there and you can see the X ring, um, that's that's great. Um, as we get older, we can't see it anymore, but we know where it's at. It's dead center in that center of that target. So you're going to put your pin over that. You're going to concentrate only on where you want the arrow to go. You don't care what the pin does because right now at this point we've already determined where the pin is going to be. When we shoot, because we've found that neutral position for that spot. And now focus only on where you want the arrow to go. Now your whole concentration is focus on the spot you want it to hit, the center of that X ring. And now you're going to go through the set process that we've talked about earlier that you've developed. What is your shot process? So, you know, for me, I've got, I've got, all right, at full draw, I put my finger on the trigger if I'm using my wrist strap, and now I'm going to concentrate on the target. I'm going to have to consciously think about starting to pull, so I'm going to start pulling. I'm going to immediately switch back to focusing on where I want the arrow to go and keep pulling, pulling, pulling until the arrow goes off. And it should be a total surprise, so you don't know when it goes off. If you're pulling the trigger, you're going to have target panic. You will get target panic if you pull the trigger. Uh, so maybe not now, but sooner you will, because if you're trying to pull that trigger, we've talked about that before. If you pull the trigger on a bow, you are thinking about the trigger to make that finger move. And and those, if you're not driving, you know, listening to or watching this, take, put your finger up so that you're, it's, it's up like it's not on, on the trigger and have it pointing out. Just relax your hand. Now pick a spot, a very small spot. Like, you know, if you're, you have a light switch, concentrate on one of the screws on the light switch or the, the, the switch itself. Concentrate on that. Now don't think about your finger. Make that finger move without thinking about it. You cannot do it. So while you're thinking about pulling the trigger, what did you have to stop doing? You had to stop aiming. So while you're not aiming, what are you going to hit? Exactly what you're aiming at. 
nothing. You're not aiming anything because you quit aiming. So that's why you want to make sure you have that technique developed earlier that we talked about so that you don't have to think about what's going on. You, you just automatically start pulling and then aim, aim, concentrate on that where the arrow wants to go, where you want the arrow. Only thing you concentrate, you're know, thinking about that. And then when it goes off, and you'd be surprised how many times you actually hit that spot because that's the only thing you're focused on. Um, I've, I've seen many times, you know, someone brings up the suggestion and it can mess things up. I was watching one of the, the cooking competition shows last night and the guy came, she was cutting up some stuff and uh, uh, one of the guys says, no, make sure you don't cut yourself. It's like, well, I'm not going to cut, I, you know, I, I don't want to cut myself. Next thing you know, she cut herself because what put in her mind? Cutting her, cutting her finger. She, that was what was put in her mind. That's what was in her mind. And that's what she did. So the same thing goes in, in archery. You know, don't say, well, I don't want to miss because what did you tell yourself? What does your mind remember? Miss. They don't remember, don't want to. That's ignored. It's, the, it's miss, 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 miss. And you're going to miss. More times than not, if that's what's going on, you're going to miss. So, what you want to tell yourself is, I see that arrow stuck dead center in that X ring. That's what I'm seeing. I've got the arrow dead center in the sex at the X ring, and that's all you're focusing on is the center of the X ring, and that's where you want it to go. And you'd be surprised how many times it actually goes there. So that's some of the things that I wanted to bring up in this is, you know, how to get that next level of, you know, shooting skill. You know, how am I going to be consistent? You know, because right now we've worked on the form. The form is, what I'm going to say is perfect uh, for, for you anyway. Um, we, we, we've gone through, we know our site set up because we set that up earlier. Uh, now we may have to do some more tweaking on the site once we get to this point. Because as we're getting better at concentrating, concentrating, and that arrow is not going there, maybe you're concentrating on that that center spot and it feels like that's where that pin is at and you hit just a little bit low. Well, you need maybe drop your, your pin down just a little bit, whether you do one pin or the whole cage, or whatever, you know, depending on the site you have, and maybe it needs to drop down a little bit. So you want to look for consistent placement. If it's always consistently one inch low of the X ring, then you need to adjust your site. You know, if one time you're, you're an inch low, inch high, left, right, that's just you varying around so as you develop this skill more and more it's going to get tighter and tighter groups one of the things that can help or hurt your groups being tight is with the tolerance of the arrows now with the um, aluminum arrows best you could get was one and a half thousandths now with the carbon arrows you can get a one thousand straightness so that's a straighter arrow and if you're shooting a three or a six or a 7,000 straightness arrow, your groups will not be as tight. They just will not be. Um, just an example of you want to have the straightest shaft available. And the reason for that is straighter shaft, tighter groups. And when you're first starting out, you don't need to, you know, probably don't want to spend the money for the high dollar arrows, the, the competition pro level arrows, uh, because they're quite a bit more expensive. Uh, but just one of the things that um, one of my, when I had my store, one of the staff shooters was shooting uh, one of the Beemans that are, I think, 3000 straightness, which is, you know, that's a pretty decent one. And, and he was grouping, you know, probably two inch groups. You know, he, he was good shot, you know, two inch groups. Nice as here. Try, uh, try one of these arrows. I give him one of mine. Now his was fletched with veins. Mine was feathers, but it was a, it was the competition pro ones, which was a 1000 straightness. And you know, that group was about half as big as it was just by changing arrows. So at some point you're going to want to get to the higher grade arrows just because your groups are much tighter. Uh, but starting out, if you're having trouble grouping, even in the, the, the white ring, then you need to work on your technique. Once you start getting tighter and tighter, then the better arrows are going to give you better groups. So now, once you get through all this practice, you know, make sure you're taking some videos of you doing this practicing. 
and and upload them to the Archer Talk 101 Facebook group, you know, or get on to the um, my YouTube channel, learn to fix it yourself. And if you're having any problems, you know, hey, just make post a comment and, you know, we can take a look at your form and see what you're doing. Maybe there's something simple that we can can change, uh, not really fix because we're not really fixing anything. We're just changing the way you're doing stuff. Uh, so maybe one way works better for you. Um, I don't necessarily, you know, say you have to do exactly like I do because you're not me. And and likewise, you know, I've had, when I was at the store, I said, can you set it up for me? You know, they wanted me to set up the bow. Well, I'm going to set it up to fit me. And I said, well, yeah, but I'd have to go hunting in place of you, <laughs> you know, because it's set up for me, not you. Um, but we can set them up, you know, pretty close. And then custom fit them to each archer. Now that's one thing you want to do. But you know, we're going to assume at this point you've already had your bow fitted. It already fits you correctly. It's the correct draw length and everything else. Now, one of the things you can do to check your draw length is take a video from behind, high enough that you can see your elbow and the arrow itself. You might have to have somebody behind you holding the camera up because most times on tripods you can't get them up high enough. Um, what you want to do when you're at full draw, you want to look at your arrow or your elbow and follow in a straight line all the way through the arrow. So it should be in a straight line from the, your elbow to the tip of the arrow should be in a straight line. If it's forward, your draw length might be too short. If it's back too far, your draw length is too long. So you want to adjust that. Now, you can change that by, by scrunching up a little bit or trying to stretch way out. But you want to be in that comfortable position. This is the form you want. And now then you can tweak that bow to get that really good alignment because when that arrow goes off, you want that hand to go forward and the elbow to come back. Now, some will take that hand actually flies back, you know, so it, it's going all the way back. Uh, mine doesn't do that. Um, some, some, on some people it does, but mine doesn't. Mine just comes back. You know, I don't, my hand doesn't, for some reason, it, it doesn't fly back, even though I'm not putting pressure in it. Um, I was talking to one guy when I was down at PSE, uh, down at the, the dealer school and he shot basically on the the gorilla squad they shoot 90 pounds and and this was you know back oh probably about 20 20 years ago now uh, a little bit more than that 20 probably about 24 years ago now and he's shooting 90 pounds and he was shooting and when he when that, those go off that hand comes flying back so they come flying back and this guy was watching him and all of a sudden he got up close to him to watch him a little bit closer comes back and smacks this guy in the head because uh, he was too close. Uh, so if you're watching somebody, make sure you know how that hand works because if it comes flying back, you don't want it to smack you or the camera or whatever. So make sure you're, you're at the right angle, back far enough that you, you won't get hit by it when you're trying to record it. Um, one thing you don't want to do, you know that hand should come back uh, I've seen archers learning this, and then they shoot, and then after the arrows are gone and already hit the target, now the hand comes back. That's that's not what it's for. It's for that's naturally when it goes off because you're relaxed and it comes back. So don't release, and then because I've seen them, it's like nothing moves. The shoot shot releases, and then all of a sudden the hand comes back. So make sure you're not doing something like that. Let it do naturally what it wants to do. If your hand comes flying back, let it. Uh, if if it doesn't come back, but just if your your elbow just goes back and your elbow drops down a little bit, that's that's fine. It's just you want to be consistent with what you're doing. Don't force it. Let it do what your your body wants it to do naturally. When that arrow goes off, it's going to naturally react to it as long as you're using the back tension release, which is what we're doing. And you're not pulling the trigger. Uh, you can do this, the same thing with back tension if you're using fingers, you know, on, on your, your long bows or recurves or even some of the older compound bows. You're going to still have that hand is still going to go across your face towards your back because you're not going to open your fingers up, which is what they used to teach. You're just going to hold them there, open your fingers. That was That's the way they used to teach it, open your fingers. Well, they found later that that's not really what you want to do. You don't want the string to move, but you want to relax your fingers as you're pulling back. So it basically just gets to a certain point and it just rips off your fingers. Well, it doesn't rip your fingers off, but I mean, it tears off the ends of the fingers, you know, slides across the end of the fingers. There we go. And then your hand comes back, you know, so you want to be, you know, still in this, that same type of emotion. So no matter what you're doing with the compounds, we generally come straight back or the recurves that kind of come across your face. 
just because you, you have to keep it tight on your face and then you, you're relaxed fingers as you go and it just kind of comes across your face and so let's go through and practice that technique and let's see how that goes from there and then um i'd like to see your your shooting technique you know go ahead and upload them uh to either one of the two places that i was talking about you can either do a comment on my youtube channel and uh, include a, a video i think you can do that um i i haven't really done that but i think you can do that if not get a hold of me and and send it to me on on messenger or better yet get in the arch talk 101 facebook group and then upload the video and then i can look at it as well as there's other instructors out there other bow technicians maybe need you know if we need to work on your your bow we can give you hints on on what to do uh, especially if you don't have a pro shop real handy uh, then, you know, this is the next best thing is to come in here and we're going to give you hints and, and some tips on how to fix stuff. We have people that have been working on the bows for 50, 60 years. We got some that have been working just a few years, but they're working on all the new bows. Some of us don't, don't work on the new bows anymore. Uh, so we're working on the older ones. So there's always somebody in here that can help you out with whatever you're doing. And, you know, if you don't have a coach, um, we can, we can help you out with that. There's also options for, um, you know, personally working with me, uh, to develop your skills a little bit better, but best thing to do is start with, let's upload a video to the group and, and go from there. So that's been kind of the, what I want to talk about today was make sure you're, you're figuring out how your neutral position is and, and where you're going to go from there and, and get uh, a little better shooting skills. So my name is Ray Canterbury. I've been host on Archer Talk 101, and we'll see you on the next one. And make sure you uh, follow me. And if you have any questions, get a hold of me. And I'm not hard to get a hold of. So see you on the next one.